Can anybody tell me what they are? Anybody know? That's one is character, correct? And then somebody said collateral. Anybody else? Uh, character. Yeah. I'll elaborate on each one. So that's going to be capital, but that's, yep. Conditions. The last one. And the last one, I want to make sure we have it right. Character, capital, capacity, collateral, conditions. Character, collateral, capacity. Thank you. Okay. So character is credit. But it's also who you are. So, for example, on your personal credit, if your year of birth on TransUnion is zero, that goes against your character. You're gonna get declined. I've seen it many times, where people with 800 credit scores, they didn't know because a human being touched their credit report at one of the credit bureaus. The other two bureaus were fine, but one bureau has the year zero or it has a misspelling of a name. These little things, not only will it get you declined, but it can throw up a fraud alert, which is even worse, okay? When it comes to your business, it's the same thing, right? So that, that has to do with your foundation and how you set up your business. So again, there's two types. There's personal credit and then there's business credit, okay? Now I'm also gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna list for you guys as we go through this, some of the different types of funding and I'm gonna try to associate the different requirements to qualify for the different funding programs that are available so that you can understand how your business credit will impact your, your ability to get approved for funding, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so collateral, okay? That's what you're gonna use to collateralize the loan. It could be equity in real estate. It could be an asset like a vehicle. It could be cash value in life insurance. It could be, you know, anything that the bank or lender accepts as collateral. Many times lenders wanna see an asset, okay? Um, so uh, a, a gentleman the other day asked me, can I just, can you collateralize my receivable, future receivable? And the answer is yes, but not every bank is gonna do that. So some banks will accept receivables, okay? Which means your future, uh, if you have contracts, the, the anticipated funding or invoices that are gonna be paid on those contracts, those are your, those are your receivables, right? Um, and so that could be used as collateral, okay? So there's, you know, so if you have no collateral and, and the bank or, or lender that you're looking at for the loan you're considering requires collateral, you can have excellent personal credit, you can have excellent business credit, but if you don't have the collateral requirement, sorry, you're not gonna get approved, right? So I will give you guys a little dime that, you know, is to note, and again, we're gonna talk about different types of loans. With SBA loans, everybody's familiar with SBA, yeah? So they have what's called an SBA 7A and a 504. The 7A could be used for working capital and a whole list of things. They give you 10 year terms at, our, at prime plus 2.75. You can get SBA loans as startups. Um, I work with about 15 banks. They're all very different. Some of them will do loans as small as 25,000 up to 5 million, okay? Some of them require collateral, some of them don't. If you don't have collateral, you can bring an equity partner to the loan. You can. An equity partner does not have to be a partner or, or a member in your business. It could just be a third party who's willing to sign to offer their equity into your loan to collateralize it for you. So not many, I, I, I know most of us don't know somebody that's willing to do that, but maybe you do. Maybe it could be a friend or a family member or a business associate that might be willing to, to offer their equity for you to qualify for that loan. So just a you know, little note. Um, as far as equity is concerned with an SBA loan. So that's collateral, okay, we beat up on that one. So capital is gonna be uh, the money that you have for a deposit. So that's basically your cash on hand, okay? So that's, in some cases, the banks will refer that as equity injection, okay? What can you deposit into the loan, okay? Um, and so, you know, some transactions might only require 3% or 10%. With SBA loans, typically they're gonna look for a 10% deposit on the loan, typically, okay? Um, but that's the cash on hand. So again, you can meet certain criteria for certain types of funding. You can have good credit, personal good credit. You can have the business credit, but if you don't have the collateral, you might not qualify. If you don't have the uh, capacity or the ability to make that deposit, you might not qualify. So again, it just depends what kind of loan are you looking at? What are you considering, okay? Um, the capacity, I just wanna make sure I'm right, is your ability to pay back the loan. So on a personal level, that's gonna be your debt to income ratio, okay? Now you can kind of cheat your way through figuring out your business's debt to income ratio, but it's actually called your debt service coverage ratio, DSCR. Your DTI, debt to income ratio, you basically, to calculate that, you're gonna take 
your debt, per, so let's just on a personal level, you're gonna take your, your total monthly debt, minimum payment, whatever your total monthly debt minimum payments are, and you're gonna divide that by your annual income, okay? That is gonna give you a percentage, and that is your debt to income ratio, okay? So your total monthly debt obligation divided by your annual personal income is gonna give you your debt to income ratio, okay? And most importantly, it's what's showing up on your credit report, right? So what's on the credit report, if it's there, it's gonna be calculated into your debt to income ratio, okay? Um, so you can more or less do the same thing for your business just by taking the business's monthly debts and then figuring based on the, the cash flow of the business annually, what is the business's DTI. The debt service coverage ratio is a little bit confusing and hard to explain and it varies depending on the bank, how they come to that conclusion. Just make a note of debt service coverage ratio and then I urge you just to research debt service coverage ratio. And these are questions that you wanna ask the bank or the lender before you apply. What is your minimum debt service coverage ratio? How do you calculate that? Make note of that and then figure it out for yourself. What is your minimum debt to income ratio? For example, on certain, a lot of times with mortgages, it'll be around 40%. But along with term loans and lines of credit for your business, it's typically around 30%, right? Um, if, you're look, if you have a lot of credit card debt and you need the ability to pay down that debt, maybe you wanna get a bridge loan, a term loan to pay down the credit cards, right? Um, they might accept up to 50%, you know? And that might be a way for you to pay down your high balance credit cards, reduce your utilization so that your credit scores can increase, okay? Um, I do wanna make a statement about debt consolidation versus um, debt restructure, because a lot of people get make the mistake and slip into doing com uh, debt consolidation. Everybody know what debt consolidation is, right? So uh, what these debt consolidation companies do is they make, they, they're attractive because they're gonna reduce your monthly payments, okay? The problem is what they're gonna do is they're gonna negotiate a settlement with the, with the debtor, with the credit card company or whatever loans you have. They're gonna negotiate a settlement. Um, they're gonna usually tell you not to make payment for a few months, which is gonna cause you to go 30, 60, 90 days late on your credit. And then they're gonna pay off that debt at a lower rate, a settled amount. And instead of, let's say you had 10 debts, 10 different credit cards, now you're gonna have one bill, right? At a lower monthly payment. So your out of pocket monthly is reduced, which seems like a good idea. However, if you care about your credit, don't ever do that. Because what it's gonna do, it's going to, they're gonna close all of those accounts. They're gonna show up on your credit report as, as uh, closed and settled for less than the original amount, okay? And what that does to your credit, it's gonna tank it. And of course it takes seven years. Now, some people say, oh, well, I could just go through credit repair. Yeah, but no, not in this instance, because that, that transaction has been documented. The negotiation, the settlement, that payoff has been documented. You're not gonna be able to get that off the credit report. So if you're considering a debt consolidation, you might wanna consider a bankruptcy. It's gonna be on your credit report for three years longer, because a bankruptcy stays on the credit report for 10 years, but at least you don't have to pay back the debt. But if in a debt consolidation, you still have to pay it back just at a lower amount and you're still gonna destroy your credit. So just be aware because, you know, some of these uh, companies that are selling these products, they make it seem very friendly and attractive, but they're gonna create another problem, which is you can't qualify for anything. All right, guys, so um, does anybody know what a UCC filing is? You don't you know what you see? What is it? That is correct. Not, not to the bureaus, but to the Secretary of State. So this is also important to know. Oh, before I continue, I'm sorry. That last one right there, conditions, okay? That's basically your use of funds. Okay, it's also the terms of the loan and the interest rate, right? Because if you're applying for an equipment loan or a truck loan, that is an asset. It's actually a lot easier to qualify for those types of loans than let's say working capital where it's unsecured, right? Because why? If you don't pay that truck loan or that equipment loan, they're gonna come take that asset, right? But if you're applying for funding, and there's no assets, there's no collateral, and you just wanna have a line of credit, then the only thing you have is your personal guarantee, which means that it's a lot higher risk for the lender. So it's a, the conditions are gonna be harder for you to get approved. Um, so just understand that different types of loans 
are gonna have different conditions. That's the last C, okay?